In this video, I will introduce the new BAS Analytical Insights, a set of dashboards for BAS manufacturing using the B1App dashboards functionality. In this dashboard, we start with the production profitability dashboard that will allow you to understand which products are more or less profitable to produce by comparing the production costs that you are having to manufacture each one of your products to the average sales price for which these products are being sold. If I expand this dashboard, I have a list of all the items that I have produced, the amounts that I produce, and the costs that I had when manufacturing those items. The cost here includes both the material and the labor costs. Then I can see here the average sales price for each one of the products. The average sales price comes from the sales orders that I had created for each one of those products. Now, based on the produced quantities and the average sales price, I have the projected sales amount for each one of the products. This is calculated by multiplicating the quantity produced to the average sales price. And by discounting the production costs from the projected sales amount, we can get the projected profit margin. That will be the profit margin that we could achieve when selling the whole production. Then the projected profit margin is divided by the projected sales amount to calculate the projected percentual profit margin, allowing us to know which products are more or less profitable to produce. The next report that we have inside this dashboard is the resources efficiencies report. In here, we can see the resources that were used in production, the costs registered for each one of them, both in terms of marginal and full costs, the planned production hours for all the production that they have executed, and the time in which they completed the production that was scheduled. Based on how long the resources took to complete production and the planned time, we can also calculate here the efficiency for each one of the machines, so we know which ones are being more or less efficient. The costs that we see here in this report can also help you to understand how the monthly costs are being composed. For example, I can see that I had a big cost on this month and I want to see which resources compose that cost. I can just click on this specific month on the chart. And here in this report, I will see a list of costs from all the resources that composes the cost of resources in that specific month. After I have filtered for one month in particular, when I want to see the whole data again, I can just remove the filter by clicking on this button. It is to return the dashboard to the original state based on the time range filter that I select over here. We have some predefined filters for data from the last 12 months, from this year, last year, this and last quarter, and this and last month. But we can also set our manual filter by clicking here on set filter. Our next report is the scrap rates, in which we can see all the resources their produced quantities and the scrap that was registered during production to calculate which resources are generating more or less scraps. This data can also be filtered for a particular month when we select the month here on the production cost over time. When we click in here, the data will also be filtered to reflect only the resources that were used in that month in particular. Then we have the inventory coverage for production that will, based on the coverage range in days that we select in this specific list, calculate the estimated days of stock that we have for each one of the components used in that range of time. Keep in mind that the inventory coverage is not calculated according to the time range that we select on the top of the report. It is calculated according to the number of days that we select in this list. In this case, I'm calculating the inventory coverage for the last 90 days of transactions. So what I'll see here on this report is all the materials that I have used in the last 90 days, their corresponding lead time, the stock that I have on hand now, and the daily issues calculated according to the transactions that happened in the 90 days that I select. Then the report will calculate the estimated days of stock and will display an icon that will help you to understand what is your current stock situation at this moment. Whenever we see a red icon on this list, this means that the current stock that we have on hand is not enough to cover the amounts that we are going to consume during the lead time that we have to purchase those materials again. In this specific case, for example, we have a daily issue of 8.28 liters and a lead time of four days. If we consider the minimum stock you would need during the time required to purchase this component again, this will be 33.12 liters. Since we have only 20 liters on stock, we see a red icon in here and a calculation saying that we only have 2.42 days of stock. Now, when we see a yellow icon on this report, this means that the stock that we have on hand 
corresponds to more than double the lead time we have for each one of the components. In the situations in which the stock is greater than the lead time and lesser than double the lead time, we are going to see a red icon. Those rules can be changed by editing and customizing this dashboard if you want to apply different indicators to the stock levels. Finally, we also have the production over time chart. This chart will show how the production costs are evolving month by month, and we can see the details by hovering the mouse over the specific months. If you want to have a list of all the resources that compose the costs in each one of the months, we only need to click on the month we desire to detail and check the results on the resources efficiencies chart. Here we can see all the resources that were used on that month and the cost reduced for each one of them. These results can also be exported if you want to check them on Excel, for example, by clicking on this button called Export to and selecting Export to Excel. As I previously mentioned, when you want to remove a filter that you have applied, you can just click on this icon to clear the filter and reload the data according to the top filter that you selected here.